sorry, the, the, the night was uh, a little shorter than uh, usual weekends, so uh, my voice is maybe uh, a little a bit... I uh, uh, hope you uh, all slept well, and um, in particular our, our attendees coming from um, UK, France, UK, Italy, uh, and uh, that's all. <laughs> and the rest from France. Uh, so we have to decide. Um, I'm talking mainly to, to the French and in particular people of the board if we have to decide if we can do uh, the session in English. My guess is yes, but I would like to have your uh, agreement because we need um, for legal issues, as we are a non-profit uh, with, uh, under French law, the um, procès verbal, the report, uh, has to be in French. It's, uh, it's, it's legal, yeah, okay. So, but we don't know if we can do uh, the session in English or... It's basically a question of consent for you, so... Yeah, I, I guess. Est-ce que, est que vous en êtes euh, d'accord Pressure of the group, very yeah, well. Group, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so a, a quick, um, a quick reminder uh, for all the people who don't know uh, how um, is um, working the association. So it's, uh, as I said, a non-profit association under under French law, which called Loi de 1901, uh, which is the the common law for all the non-profits uh, in France. Uh, the association has a legal existence, existence thanks to that. Uh, it can gather funds, uh, sue and be sued also, employ people, uh, etc. It owns the name and the legal address of the project. So openfoodfacts.org, uh, I think, belong to the association. I'm not very sure about it, but I think so. Yes, now it's, it's the case, okay. Um, it is ruled by statutes. Which are uh, which are um, um, in French, and the French ones uh, has um, um, as legal. Um no, no. I, I want. I want to say. Yes. Yes. That that's it. And the, the translation. Um, and the translation is made, v is made by Deeple, so uh, it was quick and dirty. I'm sorry about that. So uh, the English translation should be at least correct. But maybe uh, if there are points that uh, you don't understand, uh, the French version uh, is, uh, is the right one, and you can ask questions uh, about it if you, uh, if, you have, uh, if you have some. We will do a better translation in English, but French remains, still remains, the one that will be official and uh, uh, that will be legal uh, for, for the association. Okay, is it, is it clear for everybody? Uh, just yeah. Uh, for, uh, for FYA, just like uh, collaborating the same thing in uh, three uh, but in the Okay. Yeah, collaborative note taking in a quick pad, pad in the off day channel. <laughs> and, and please take notes because uh, we will have to do the report. Yes. Thank you. Just take clean notes so we can just copy paste. Yes, and yes. And not have to write the report. <laughs> okay. Um, so the statutes, uh, statutes, 
I don't know. Uh, defines the governance and uh, operation. It, the, um, every association in France is governed by its members. Okay. Uh, you can ask, all, anyone can ask for membership, but um, pri private uh, company, yes, they are allowed to, um, no. to, no? Just uh, individuals. You just what? Individuals. Just individuals? I don't, don't remember. Yes, we, uh, we have to check the status. But um, I think that um, if uh, Nestlé, for example, would like to, uh, to register uh, the association, uh, he, he could do it, but I think he can't. Uh, no, we have the right to, uh, to deny the membership. Yes, yes, that's it. That's speak it, yeah. Box, speak in the to box. Speak in the box. <laughs> so you're all welcome to become a member of the association. Anyone is. In the statutes, we did say that we reserve the right to refuse uh, membership to someone or some entity if we decide it's not a good idea. And uh, maybe it, did, it never happened, but uh, maybe if, I don't know, like the food industry lobby wanted to be part of Open Food Facts, we would discuss it. <laughs> okay. Fine. Membership gives the right to vote uh, at the General Assembly, okay? And also membership give the right to, um, to be elected as a board member. Is it clear? Don't hesitate to ask questions. Can I uh, add something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. One reason why we created this uh, non-profit association, it's also to be crystal clear that uh, this is a collaborative and free project and it will remain so it's so nobody owns open food facts nobody yes. can sell it to anyone it's not going to be sold to microsoft to google or whoever it's uh, and it's it was very important to us since the beginning to really say that yes <laughs> yeah i can repeat it's in it the statutes uh, it's in the, yeah yeah I mention it because people uh, ask me about that. Oh, uh, uh, people ask me this every time. Right? It's, but uh, yeah, it's from the very beginning. It's it's never going to be sold. It's like Wikipedia. It will remain free. Okay. Um, so big and and maybe small decisions are taken are taken by the members during the general assembly, which is the highest place to take decisions. There is no higher place than the General Assembly to take decision, okay? Um, for example, the, 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 the board of uh, directors, it's board of directors, you can say in English, yeah, I think it's the board, yes. Uh, they, they can't go against decision, for example, which are taken by the General Assembly, which is also important. Uh, the General Assembly elects a board of administrators, administrators or directors, I don't know, uh, up to 10 people elected for two years and half of the board is renewed each year. Okay, um, that's very interesting because it prevents uh, the association to being uh, maybe uh, um, invaded by uh, people maybe we, d we wouldn't like uh, um, to, to take the, the ownership of the project. Uh, for example, the board of administrators is taking operational decisions between each general assembly, and general assembly notes have to be published in French. But I said discussion can take place in English. Okay. Uh, so, alors là j'ai une hésitation. Est-ce qu'on projette le rapport? Euh, d'activité qui n'est qu'en français, à moins que ta, ta traduction. Ouais. Alors, Ok. Sinon, j'ai fait un, un résumé, mais vraiment un très très gros résumé. Est-ce qu'on on détaille et on déroule toutes les pages ou est-ce qu'on voit seulement le résumé What do you prefer
and the pad is Yes, yes, um, no, it's not this one. The pad is here. <coughs> and the only other report is Okay, thank you very much, Pierre. So this is our annual report, which is a legal document for every nonprofit. Um, it doesn't have to be public. Uh, it only has to be public for the members. But at Open Food Facts, uh, we decided a very long time ago to make it public um, because it, it's more aligned with our uh, goals and uh, operation and uh, so on. Um, so uh, it's a long document. Uh, there is about uh, 25 pages, 24, I can't remember. Um, it's interesting to read. Uh, this year we, uh, we tried to um, take into account um, the, um, um, the comments uh, of the previous General Assembly. Uh, which said that uh, we should uh, add more um, um, more numbers, uh, more data, more uh, uh, and to explain a bit more the projects and things like that. Uh, in particular, Florence, uh, uh, you were right. And I think this year it's more readable uh, for, for example, founders or uh, uh, people outside of the project also. So it's, I think it's, uh, it's more interesting. <laughs> So this is the editorial for, from the president, uh, Anka, thank you very much. Uh, the Open Food Facts project, we um, remind who we are and uh, why we are doing what we are doing. Um, here is an interesting uh, schema. Um, we, we like this schema because uh, it explains very well uh, that um, the data is linked uh, with contributors, producers, and impacts. When we have many data which are open and reusable for a multitude of products, it creates usages with scientific knowledge and numerous applications. Scientific knowledge we saw yesterday with uh, Professor uh, Chantal Julia that it was uh, very important for them. And we also uh, see um, yesterday with all the people uh, building apps uh, such as Horizon, Spice Camer, uh, El Coco, and so on, that it's our, our data are also useful for many people. And with these usages, it creates enlightenment. Enlightenment for people from uh, gen the general public, but also enlightenment for producers, which is very interesting. And that is a thing uh, which is probably um, uh, not, not well known from Open Food Facts, but you know that we, we try to, um, to uh, make some uh, recommendation to the, uh, to the producers. And so with our data, we are able to, to enlighten producers and tell them, hey, this kind of products you, can, you could you could build better products, uh, for example, uh, lowering the, the salt or some, something like that. And so this data and this usage enlighten not only uh, people, but also producers. And uh, with enlightened people, there are more people which are able to be engaged in the project. Because when you understand better nutrition, when you understand better the, the, the products, and when you understand better also the project, you are more, um, um, it's easier for you to, to be engaged, to, uh, to, uh, to, to be involved in the project. And so it creates also more data and so on. So it's a circular 
what we call a virtuous circle in the food, uh, in the, um, of the food transparency. And all this circle creates an impact, which is at the center, that people enlightened uh, both consume and both build products that are healthier and with a lower environmental impact. And I think this, um, this schema is, is very interesting to understand how we can uh, make impact uh, with open food facts. Do you think it's clear, this, this kind of schema? Or yeah? Okay. Ah, sorry. Yes. See, um, I'm just keeping the, the the report for the projects, which are very interesting because the, the I, I don't detailed. Okay. In the report, you will be able to see the main actions. Uh, which took place in uh, 2021. Um, the report is for 2021, not for, for this year, but um, we have delayed yes, the General Assembly uh, because of the COVID, and we try now to do it uh, earlier in the, in the year. I think next year it will uh, take place maybe in June or uh, uh, in the first semester, but uh, for, so we don't speak about 2022. But in 2021, one of the main and the huge uh, events in the, in the history of the project was the launch of the EFCO score. So I won't say um, much thing about it, but because you probably uh, already uh, know it and uh, we have um, much communicate for, for this. Um, this is a project maybe um, maybe, uh, Stefan, you can give words for personalized uh, personalization of product. Sure. Uh, so, so the idea between uh, for behind personal search was to give everyone the, the choice to say, okay, what I care the most about is uh, nutrition, or I'm allergic to gluten, or I don't, I'm vegan. And so the idea is uh, to be able to put those preferences in the mobile application or in the website, and then we tell you exactly how much products match your personal uh, preferences. And, and we also show you up front the information you are interested in. So here I said, I'm allergic to gluten, so on each of the products I can see, well, this one contains gluten, I shouldn't uh, eat it. That's the idea behind uh, personal search. And, and it will be even more um, put at the front in the new, it, it is already in the new app, and on the new website we will put it in, a, in even, it will, be, it will be even more uh, visible. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. Another Im important information um, which happened last year is that we um, reached uh, two millions of products, uh, and now we are two million and a half. Uh, you know, it's getting very, very fast. About uh, 50, uh, f um, 50 half thousand products per month, new products per month. It's quite fast, and it continues to, to grow. Um, just to give you a, a small number, um, about uh, one year and a half before, we were at um, uh, 40,000 products per month. Now we are 50,000 uh, new products per month. So it continues to increase and uh, it's really uh, huge. Um, yeah, what, what is interesting is in, his, in its graph also is that you can see that before having some sort of uh, of before launching the virtuous circle of transparency, 
we, we need to have products. And that is the main issue in some countries. When you don't have many products, people don't use the app or people are, are not, uh, uh, they don't want to participate because there are too few products and they don't uh, feel the, 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 the um, they don't think it's, it's interesting. And in France, because the, the project was born in France, you can see that we take a long, 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 long time to begin uh, because at, uh, at first nearly all the products were in France and we took a long, long time and then it started and uh, um, we think that uh, at a moment when we have reached a certain number of products, we are well known in the country and then it's, it's uh, comment dire, basculé, um, it's, um, it's a tipping point. Yes, we reach a tipping point. Very good, thank you. So you, you can read more in the in the report, which is a detail. Uh, what is, is also interesting uh, is that we are no more a French project. This graph shows um, the curves for France in red and from outside of France in blue. So we, we can see that uh, until um, 2018, uh, we were mainly, or no, sorry, 2020, we are mainly a, a French project, and a minority of, pro of products were outside uh, of France. And now, in France, the curve tend to be, um, in French we say le dos rond, uh, I don't know, <laughs> yes, to be flattened, merci. Uh, and maybe we have reached a point that we are we have nearly 99% uh, of the product of the products in the uh, in the country so um, or at least the most used product the most buy bought products by the by the people uh, but in outside of France that we know that we have a huge progression and uh, we, we can see now that we are more an international project than a French project it's important for us because before we, we were still mainly focused in Fran uh, focused by France, and uh, uh, now we understand that uh, it's really no more the case. Um, also, the, um, the curves here see uh, some um, some European countries. Um, so it's uh, curves from uh, except France and the USA. Um, in blue, it's uh, Spain um, and Germany, uh, Italy, uh, UK, uh, Switzerland, and so on. And we can see that many countries have reached also more than uh, 50,000 uh, products, and uh, even some of them uh, have reached more than uh, uh, 100,000 products. So we expect that we will reach the tipping point in those countries uh, maybe in a few months. Or at least we started something, I guess, in these countries. Okay. Uh, don't hesitate to ask questions or if you have um, soft comments. Uh. Yes. Do you ha do you have an idea of the maximum volume of product per country? What's the idea like? Uh, no. <laughs> um, maybe one thing that we we are um, confident is that in France uh, we have reached when when uh, we uh, answer uh, about more than nine uh, ninety nine percent of the scans. Okay, uh, so when you when people are scanning products in France, in 99% they've got an answer from us. Um, so, but in France, also in France, we have many, 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 many projects products what, which are sold in uh, very little markets. Um, of course, some of them uh, are under our radar because they they don't have barcodes. Uh, but some of them have barcodes, but are very uh, uh, are confidentially sold 
so um, I guess that uh, we, we never know uh, the, the, this product anyway. Kier? I would say that a ballpark figure for like uh, Western Europe is probably around 1 million per country. Uh, some specific market like the US, where like you have a state division, where like a supermarket can be in one, two, three states, will be probably more than 1 million. But that's uh, like that's a uh, back of the envelope uh, estimation. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, contribution also um, is um, is interesting. Um, of course, we have many people that just try open food facts and uh, enter one, two, or three products. Uh, this is the majority of contributions. Um, this is a logarithmic uh, scale. So um, here you have uh, uh, 600 people uh, per month which are uh, entering between one and five products. Okay, and then we have all the curves here where you can um, understand, uh, where you can see uh, people entering uh, between uh, six and ten products, it's green, and between 11 and 100 products, which is uh, blue, and between 100 and 1,000 products in um, uh, purple. Uh, so what's interesting is that people entering many products is growing fast. Uh, the explication uh, is uh, very easy, it's the apps. Uh, so thanks for uh, for example, for Horizon, uh, Spy the Camera, or uh, uh, other apps, like uh, we, we thank you about that because uh, uh, you play, uh, you're, a good, you're good partners because uh, not every uh, app in uh, which are reusing Open Food Facts data uh, get back or uh, sub suggests to their user to, um, to add the data. And uh, so uh, you, you are um, you are participating to the common pot, uh, and uh, you benefit from it, and we benefit also uh, from it. Uh, all the, everybody benefit from it. Um, so this is the the apps which are growing uh, the number of new products, and uh, um, we can see also that uh, people entering uh, between five and one hundred products also tend to grow, uh, which is also a, a good news. And these uh, two curves are real people. These are not apps, uh, these are real people. So which are entering, we, we have about um, 40 people per month which are entering between five and uh, 100 products. Just to have a smaller numbers and data to uh, better understand uh, how we work. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, here, this is brilliantly yes. presented yes. When, when, it come, when it comes to end users. But I know that I discussed with Stephanie about uh, companies that are also contributing yes. to this data. So you have another slide. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Yeah. thank you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because um, the um, producers are not take it into, uh, taken into account in this uh, graph. Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, see. Uh, other data later. <coughs> Another operation which we discussed uh, yesterday uh, a little bit with uh, Chantal Julia um, was the operation through space uh, with Nutrinet Santé. So maybe um, you have heard of it uh, yesterday or do I have to explain again? No, it's okay. Okay. Um, so just to illustrate, uh, it was not a, a very big operation, but a very interesting operation because it was made with the community and it's to illustrate our relationship with uh, the research and uh, with the people from the RN. Um, we, we saw uh, Chantal Julia yesterday talking about it. Um, okay, so the takeoff the, of the pro platform. Uh, maybe Manon would like to say a word about it. Fine, <laughs> because if I always speak, uh, it will be boring. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, 
So yeah, there's been a lot of work uh, done on the pro platform, which I didn't participate, but I'm happy to see the result of it. Um, this pro platform is dedicated to uh, professionals, and it's here to help them import the product in a bigger way than just individual contributors, and this is uh, the main value that we get from this, uh, from this platform. Uh, and on top of this functionality to help them import products, they can also get insights about um, their product portfolio. So they can scroll their products by Nutri-Score, by Eco-Score. They can uh, display them according to the type of um, additive that is contained in the product. Uh, and most importantly, as Charles mentioned earlier, uh, thanks to this platform, we have the ability to promote opportunities of reformulation of products. So we are putting forward a product that would benefit from little modification, like a little bit less sugar or a little bit less salt, uh, to improve the Nutri-Score and uh, improve the, uh, the overall uh, health benefit of the product. Uh, and soon, hopefully, we'll be able to do the same for EcoScore. Uh, which I think will be very appreciated by, by the producers. But we get very great feedbacks from the producers and we'll keep trying to improve it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Manon. Uh, these are uh, small data about uh, the growth of the pro platform, which is also very interesting. Uh, we launched it at the end of uh, 2019 but uh, we have um, we had um, at the beginning few producers, fruit producers with six uh, producers. Now we have more than 134 producers uh, in 2021. So in 2022, uh, nowadays we are at um, I don't know, maybe I, I <laughs> more, more than 200, I guess. But I'm not sure. But we we will verify. Um, so th there are many producers that uh, are using the pro, the pro platform. Of course, the mass, mass majority of them are pushing that uh, use it to push their data. Okay, but some of them uh, and maybe many many more are using the the platform also for our recommendations, uh, which is very interesting because it is a concrete impact. Uh, impact uh, of open food facts. Um, what is important is in these numbers, maybe. Um, yes, um, when producers send us uh, data, they send us data uh, that allows us to compute the nutri score. They, they send us complete data most of the time nearly complete data. So we are allowed to uh, compute more Nutri-Score and this is why, for example, the number of products with a Nutri-Score has increased in 2021. Uh, I, uh, we, we, uh, we, we don't think, we are sure. It's because of the producer that send us many products with complete data. Maybe something we could add is that uh, Manon where is making a huge push to get international uh, European producers to get us data. So if you have uh, if you have links to food manufacturers in your country, please do tell us so that we can uh, reach out to them. And in 2020, there has been uh, some things completely behind the scene, uh, which is the preparation of the new app. Uh, Pierre, would you say a few words about it? Um, the preparation of the app. So basically the, the app has been around since 2013 um, and we kind of, it's like the Sleeping Beauty, the app went, uh, uh, didn't evolve very much between 2013 and 2019. Uh, then we like created those new two native apps on Android and iOS but then it posed us like a development effort, a development issue where like we'd have to put a lot of effort to in the end not have a very satisfying result in terms of uh, feature parity, things like that. So the idea was to uh, create a single uh, app with the same feature on both platform 
and to make it very flexible, to allow us, because products are very diverse, so you can't handle uh, mineral water the same way you would uh, uh, analyze uh, beef lasagne, for instance. So the idea was to create uh, uh, an app that would allow for contribution, allow for this road to scores, so road to impact uh, the uh, or like minimal warranty to have like Nutri score and Eco score in 60 seconds in any country in the world in any language. So that's the core value. So uh, to be able to get that information and access it. Um, and so the big novelty with this app is that it's cross-platform, but also that it's driven by the server. So it allows us to move from data, from raw data to knowledge and to basically be able to decipher more products and update uh, information on the fly in every language. So uh, it was started by the community, uh, by Primal, by others, uh, and we got like uh, a boost thanks to the Google Impact Challenge where several Googlers uh, worked full time on making sure that we hit the finish uh, phase for the app and um, it was, as you all know, released in VivaTech this year. So it has been received uh, well. Uh, it was like we, we migrated like the whole user base with uh, like technical uh, difficulties for to migrate properly the database. But on the whole, it has been received well. And uh, we are now trying to make sure that Power contributors find what they loved about the previous app, so flexibility, speed, etc. Uh, while we retain the general public, so the easier part, the easier interface of the app for the general public, uh, while retaining the power of the app for like our core contributors. Thank you very much, Pierre. Um, another important project but um, which is not very well known for the moment because for the moment there hasn't been um, a public uh, release of the project is a Foxonomy engine. Um, here at uh, Open Food Facts, we are uh, watching, of course, uh, what people do uh, in uh, other projects, such, such as uh, OpenStreetMap, for example. And in OpenStreetMap project, they have a really interesting thing, is that everyone is allowed to create new tags, new fields, new properties for each object, uh, for each data. And so we were wondering if we could do that in Open, in open Food Facts. But, of course, uh, we we didn't um, we, we were not it was not possible to uh, modify the, the the main data model of Open Food Facts, which we kept as uh, it uh, exists uh, now, and we created uh, some kind of a new service, uh, a completely independent service, which is called Folksonomy Engine, which is a new API. Uh, allowing people, third-party application, or annoying also open food facts, to uh, push new properties um, to some products, completely free properties, like in Wikidata, Florence. Um, yes. I'm sorry. Sorry. You said you allowed the creation of the structure to users. The structure, yeah. The, the, the structure is very simple. It's uh, only uh, properties and values. Okay. <laughs> but you don't. But yes. yeah, but now it's it's hardly uh, um, allowed anymore to create new structure ah, yes, on Wikidata because it yes. after a while it gets messy. Yes. So uh, right. right now you're still it's open to a, a bunch of test users, yes. so they are okay. But once it's public, it yes. might not be so. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. You, you synthesize well. Um, so for the moment, it's, it's an ex I would call it an experiment. Uh, it has been funded, that's good. <laughs> but it's more an experiment for moderators. Uh, so I, I think in this room, uh, nearly everyone is a moderator of uh, Open Food Facts. If you are not, uh, you can ask me or ask, ask Stefan to, to, uh, to be one. And uh, you will be able to see uh, new interfaces 
clearly uh, distinguish between the rest of the website, uh, uh, which can allow you to enter new properties and new products. Uh, we just give an example here. For example, we created a property uh, which is um, a product that have uh, the, um, a character on it. Uh, on the picture, for example, there is Dark Vador, Darth Vador. Um, and um, uh, so there is a property for that. Uh, we feel that this property, for, ex uh, for example, is interesting because these products are mainly tra targeting kids. And so maybe it could be interesting to understand if the products with a character which, tar which, which target uh, kids are good for the earth or not, for example. It's, I think it would be interesting to, uh, to investigate that. Uh, so now we can do that. We can do that, and uh, before we, we, we can't. Yes, Pierre. Pierre, here. speak in the box. A few compliments. The microphone uh, sounds better than the box. Um, just a few compliments on Volksnomy Engine. We haven't integrated it in like mainstream workflows right now. So it's not been, we've done preliminary work to integrate it within the mobile app. Uh, we've done preliminary work to in integrate it within the website. Uh, so it's n we haven't like uh, uh, made custom interfaces for use case like I know packaging or, or anything. Right now it's really an experimental tool. And the second point, uh, which is important, is that we, we've been talking about food, but this probably has a very big potential for non-food products to allow us to model uh, things like chairs, uh, computers, anything like that. So it's probably the biggest use case for the Volksnomy engine as I see it. Okay, so, so um, what we can say about it is if you, uh, if you can test this uh, new feature uh, as moderators and try maybe to uh, to imagine also use cases or uh, or if you want you uh, as a user to uh, tag some products because uh, you want to tag for, I don't know uh, all products in red for example why not uh, uh, you know that some people are making dinners uh, with a, a color theme uh, you, you you could do that and you could uh, uh, tag for yes Alex. No, just to say that the API, it's not, uh, it's for moderators on the interface, but the API is open to every application. So yes. if, a, if a third party application wants to use the Volksonomy and China API, they are free to do it. It's a uh, yes. it's very so simple uh, API and yes. it's documented. So for people who are building apps, uh, if you want to use it, it's very well documented uh, and uh, you, you can already use it. It's in production and it's uh, uh, solid, uh, rock solid uh, database, uh, it's, it, it's okay for it. Yes? Are, are these tags specific to the user or that is signed in? How are they stored or are they available for everybody? You, you have to, um, to um, it's, it identifies you uh, with your account. Okay? Does, does that imply that uh, it's Oh, only for moderators as well through the API? API? No, no, no. It's the API. You can do every application. Okay. But of course, uh, through the API, uh, only um, known users which are aware about uh, these kind of things will. Uh, and related yeah. to API, I have a question. Is there any, any food product which is labeled uh, Didier Raoult? <laughs> uh, there, is yeah. there? Yeah, it's yeah. there. There are two bottles of beers in Marseille which are, which are sold with a picture of Didier Raoult. Yeah, that's right. Seriously? Yes, <laughs> yes. Two bottles of beer, a little bottle of beer. Yes? Yeah, because beer. beer can also cure you from COVID. I, I can show you it in the but, database um, if you want. I'm interested, but just uh, so thinking ahead when you publish this, maybe that's not a good example to show. In particular, no, I, okay, that's an open question, but it's humoristic at the same time, right? Yeah. And you also want to be serious with the science. Yeah, but so it's interesting. I, I love, I, I think the Pikachu and Maya and Dark Vader are excellent examples. It's, it's a bit controversial, so it might, you know, 
it tickles some people. It's just yeah, but, but it, it, I think it's interesting to, uh, to uh, allow to gather data, to gather yeah. products which are controversial. No? Yeah, okay. it, it's fine to be in the database, it's okay. It's <laughs> more like yeah, when you yeah, okay. actually go public with that tool, okay, uh, okay, you okay. Know, look for funding, such as in certain institutions, look for funding to improve that tool. Maybe that's best to avoid controversial issues. Okay, okay, Just okay, 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 okay. Keep it in yeah, the database. Yeah, right? on the report. Yes. Yeah. On yes. The, right. Yeah. You're right. Just You're right. Just in case. Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll take that into account. Um, ah, uh, so uh, Christian Kess is not here today, um, so he can't speak about that. Um, did you want to say a word about it, uh, Stefan or, um, or Alex? Or, um, well, ju just to say that uh, we improved the infrastructure in 2021, uh, tasks with the servers and things like that. Uh, I'll be very quick about it, but it's a very important stuff because uh, this is the thing that uh, uh, the, the engine, of course, of um, OpenFoot Facts, and uh, without infrastructure, we, we could couldn't do uh, uh, what we are doing. So um, uh, just to mention it, uh, I think it was uh, important. Um, the fundings, I will tell you more in, the, in my slides. Uh, and here in the, also in the report, we'll be, you'll be able to see um, also some small data about, um, it has been asked, uh, uh, the um, last year to have uh, um, more data from year to year to see the evolution of some uh, uh, key indicators of the project and so we choose one if you have more ideas of course uh, it would be great and we, we could uh, uh, try to uh, take this into account uh, we put the number of products of course which is a uh, um, interesting. Um, the audience also, uh, also, for example, the annual web audience, uh, it was 10 million uh, people in uh, 2019. Uh, in 2021, it was 21 million and uh, it still uh, continued to, uh, to grow. Uh, apps, uh, community apps, uh, apps which are we using our data, uh, there were more than 100 in uh, 2019 and now there are more than uh, 138. Um, a quick word about um, human resources. I, I'm not very comfortable with this uh, title, human resources, because uh, maybe we, we think that uh, the, the community is just resource and uh, it's not the community, of course, is the project, is the project. <laughs> no, I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> but it's a um, too economical vision uh, from, from my uh, point of view, but asset. okay. Human asset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, so, but I come from another sector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we just try to uh, to put the uh, the, the amount uh, big big. Um, oh, how, how can I say that? Um, we, we try to yeah to to, to push amounts of work uh, done by uh, both the community, the permanent team, uh, contributing apps and uh, and so on. Um, so what things very important to uh, to understand is that uh, the community is uh, the leader, of course, is the, is the big worker of the the project, and uh, it's thanks to the community, uh, to our community, uh, that we can do what uh, we can do. Of course, the permanent team uh, in 2021, in particular, it was just four person. And uh, four persons, and uh, we just support. We we think that we we are there to support the community, but not to. Uh, we are not leading the project. Okay. Um, and finance, I will 
um, talk about it uh, later or so. There's no target. I have a question uh, whilst you're updating this. Um, why not putting something like, uh, as an indicator, the number of downloads of the apps? Or I don't know if it's, it can be identified, the, the apps that are actually underused by people, the number of active use. I don't know if this is tracked. It I suppose it is. It can. It can. Uh, it's not glorious. I didn't hear that uh, word. Let's ask the third person. When he said the last sentence, he said, he said it's not girls. Glorious. It is not glorious. If it's not glorious, then don't don't put it in. <laughs> yeah, but why not? It can be like a base to improve it. Yeah, but maybe not in the annual report. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. You want the box? Yeah, I was saying that uh, even if it's not glorious, I would put the numbers. Uh, I think it's important. So uh, basically, we, we live on the, um, on the legacy of the Envoyé Special night. So most of our downloads were done that night. Um, and like there's no dynamic, uh, no, no mobile app dynamic uh, that I can spot right now. Uh, 2019. Uh, actually, uh, just a little after we uh, moved the app from Cordova to Native. So w when we had like this uh, new Android app uh, that you all knew. Um, and uh, my hope is that the upcoming redesign of the website is actually going to have a halo effect on the download. But that remains to be proven. Yeah, we just need to make sure that uh, um, the spike of that uh, of that um, um, TV uh, appearance is not going to hide the rest of the evolution. If you look at the chart and you include that spike, obviously you're not going to see anything else. It's going to look small and flat. Yeah. But no, but I, I understand what you're saying. It's just that we could look at evolution because there is some. Okay, may not yeah. be that grand, yeah. but there is some, and we could look at it and just. Yeah. So, uh, so actually, figures are flat. No, they are. They, they are they, I, believe me, uh, they are flat. You don't change it for this year, of course, but for next year, if it change or if it's interesting a certain, in a certain country, then maybe it makes sense to use it. For example, the Spain market, which is looking good, if there is for some reason a press announcement next year in Spain, then you can put the, the increase as an example for Spain as a growing market. Be careful that the figures that were presented by country are number of products. So, and uh, yeah. this means that it's, it's driven by the ecosystem uh, and not necessarily by, the, by our own app. So one other uh, question slash idea about uh, indicators. What about uh, something uh, to monitor the pro platform uh, usage? And especially, can we, could we track um, something like uh, how many recommendations has been uh, yeah. consulted by the pro? Even if, if it's not, it's maybe hard to know if at the end they leverage the recommendation, but at least if they consulted 
that, it's, I think it's an interesting indicator. Yes, yes. Yes, th that's very interesting. We don't look at this for the moment, honestly. Uh, but I think we, we um, the pro platform is already... Um, it's uh, already instrumented. Yes, it's instrumented. So we, I guess we could have a look at it. Uh, maybe for the next year. That's a very, very good idea because it, it's a very concrete impact. And uh, yeah, uh, and good idea. One thing also that's interesting for producers is qualitative surveys. So uh, ask them what they, if they've actually acted on it. Uh, they saw it, did they act on it? Did, uh, did, it, has a, did it have, sorry, a real life impact, etc. cetera? Uh, okay, you were like, no. okay. Uh, two years ago we tried, um, um, a survey for the producers, but there were too few and we didn't get uh, uh, as much uh, answer as we expected. Uh, but now that there are 100 and more than uh, maybe 200, uh, I think that we, uh, we would get more answers and it would be interesting maybe to, uh, uh, to do it uh, at the beginning of next year, for example. Yeah, I, I think it's... Uh, and it's probably interesting. something interesting for the users as well. Uh, impact for the users. Yeah, and this year we also started uh, some work about metrics, uh, metrics about our, not only our actions, but our impact. Like this virtuous cycle with improvement of products, we want to get metrics about, yeah, which do products actually improve and how much of that can be tied to the work that we do. Uh, same thing with uh, the launch of the Nutri-Score or the Eco-Score in other countries. Uh, why, why does it matter? So we, we have started this work to, to try to define those metrics and then, then the, what's going to happen next is to put in place the platforms to gather the, the, the actual data. And uh, same thing for the, our impact on science, things like uh, how many studies are reusing open food facts data and things like that. That's going to be very interesting to, to track going forward. And, and it's also very important because most of the institutions who fund open food facts, they really care a lot about the impact of uh, what we do. So we, we need to put like some hard numbers, uh, figures about, about that. And we, we do need help on that. So if, you, if, if that's a topic that interests you, uh, please talk to us. Okay, Pierre from... Uh so now for a really quick recap of uh, what went on last year, it's uh, really like uh, an extract. So we launched, actually 2021, so we launched the EcoScore at the start of the year. Uh, we also uh, care a lot about education, so we did some uh, contri analysis of contribution with uh, uh, some students. Uh, we also... Uh, welcome some students uh, from uh, uh, around the world uh, to work on the Perl backend, so uh, uh, Roshin. Uh, we uh, accompanied the EcoScore through its um, rollout uh, across France, so participating in several podcasts, both in French and English. Uh, we also were part of the French governmental experiment on nutritional, uh, on, sorry, environmental labeling uh, with EcoScore. And uh, we uh, did a, uh, some, some press uh, on that as well. So the year was really EcoScore centered, as you can see. Um, we, we went on national TV as well. So uh, we, we keep having coverage on the nutrition uh, aspect, which is good. Uh, we attended COP26, uh, where we pleaded for environmental labeling and, and uh, uh, reached out to the UK market. Um, we also imported some major producers, uh, so PepsiCo, thanks uh, to Eloise, uh, who's here, uh, we imported, so we, we now have Unilever, we have PepsiCo along with smaller producers, and uh, we concluded the year uh, with uh, a partnership with uh, Philippe Chabest, who's a French chef, uh, to display the Echo score on his uh, most famous recipes for like a, a lighter thing, a lighter uh, New Year's Eve. Okay, th thank you very much, Pierre, for reminding us that uh, uh, I presented you the, the, the big projects, 
uh, but uh, we, we have to remind also uh, the, the lighter project or the lighter uh, or which which were very important for some of them. For example, uh, our presence to uh, COP26 uh, was also very interesting uh, for networking contacts and uh, and uh, also to be there. Uh, so um, thank you very much, Pierre, to uh, to remind uh, uh, to remind us all of this. Uh, okay, so I want. There, there is a bit. So I want to get but back. Has been with new, uh, new as you all know. Um, that's all for the report, and I'll switch. Um, sorry. Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so to, to sum up a bit, uh, what was the fellowship? I guess you have already presented it, but uh, again, it was, so um, Open Food Facts um, presented a project about the EcoScore or um, the Google Impact Challenge, which is a challenge, <laughs> as name, uh, that the foundation of uh, Google company offer every year or every two years to uh, non-profits or um, tech um, innovative uh, startup. And the idea is to support financially uh, those non-profits. So there is this competition, this challenge, um, where in, uh, specifically in 2019, um, Open Food Act have, uh, took part uh, of this Google Impact Challenge dedicated to environment and with the project of EcoScore. And uh, after that, so Open Food Act was one of the winners uh, in uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa. So well done, uh, supported financially and has also um, had access to another program from the foundation, which is called Google Fellowship. Uh, and part of this fellowship, there is a pro bono uh, employee from Google uh, working during a few months, so here six months, for non-profit. So concretely for Open Food Fact, uh, it was uh, 10 employees, even, even a bit, bit more if we don't take the full-time employee, but 10 full-time employees working during six months for Open Food Fact, um, between uh, July uh, 2021 and for others until uh, May this, uh, this year. Uh, mostly engineers, I think seven employees out of uh, 10 were engineers working on the app development and, um, and the database, um, the machine learning on the database. And three other people were, um, were on the marketing and the partnership side. So I was <laughs> among them. Um, and uh, yes, and we, we, had, uh, we, we had a great, uh, we were lucky to be part of this uh, great project. Uh, and we are happy to see um, uh, how, yeah, how much we, we were able to contribute. And so, um, yeah. All the team from Google side uh, was really proud <laughs> to support Open Food Act, and uh, we are ha happy to see uh, also the result on the app and, uh, and so on. It's not only, of course, Google, but to be part of it, it was a great opportunity. Thank you very much, Louis. Um, okay, so um, a few words, words also about the, the big pictures about the finances, uh, and maybe um, Vincent, uh, Vincent uh, will show you a short presentation of, and, uh, yeah. Okay, fine. So do you want to, uh, we maybe we can start with the big numbers, uh, Vincent, or do you want to uh, to start with your presentation? Okay, fine. Uh, where 
Thank you, Charles. So, uh, I had no idea we would do that in English today. So, I prepared it in French. And we have to keep it in French because um, Open Food Facts is a French nonprofit. Our accounting uh, norms and standards have to be the French ones. So, I tried uh, while Charles was presenting the previous talk to translate it as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, so we will keep the, all the French everywhere, but I try to put some English uh, in orange characters uh, so that our non-French speaking audience can follow what's happening. Um, yeah. uh, this page is all in French, I'm sorry for that. Uh, the, this presentation is just a synthetic presentation. Uh, we just uh, try to share the, the big numbers. If you want all the gory details of the uh, full accounting report, you can find it uh, by following this link. And, um, the balance sheet has been established by our um, accounting expert company, Finacop, according to the French uh, accounting regulation for nonprofits. And I will have to follow the usual order of uh, the French balance sheets. It doesn't start with the most interesting things. Uh, Charles, if you can. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a, a quick, a quick comment. Uh, yes. The, the, the company wh uh, which are doing um, the our accounts, um, the accounting company, is that it? Yes. Um, they are specialized with uh, non-profit organizations, and uh, they are also uh, doing the accounts of uh, Wikimedia France, for example. Uh, so they they know well. Uh, the rules for non-profit organization and uh, they, they are well skilled and um, we, we like to, to work with them. Okay, thank you. So I will be quick on those first figures. Um, usually uh, non-profit don't have a lot of fixed assets. Maybe some big ones have some buildings or such, but for us we have just a little participation in our bank because we use a mutual bank and we have as every customer of this bank to own a little share of the bank. So that's a 15 euro you, you see on top. And uh, the uh, association bought a few computers for people working in. So that's what you see uh, <laughs> here. Uh, and it's amortized on three years uh, as is usual in those cases. Nothing really interesting here. Thank you, Charles. Um, then uh, the other assets, not fixed but current, um, what is moving more quickly, uh, there are, uh, previous one? I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there are a few receivable. There was a lot more uh, last year uh, because of COVID, uh, there was some uh, quite complex scheme of help from the government and some some of the help came late so uh, it inflated the receivables in the 2020 uh, balance sheet it's back to something more normal for an association like us 10,000 euro around um, the bank balance is enormous yeah <laughs> uh, you have to explain <laughs> and th yeah. there will be some explanation yeah, uh, there will be some explanation about how we uh, choose to uh, uh, 
do the accounting around that. Uh, the main uh, part of those uh, bank balances are from uh, the Google Impact Challenge. Uh, we were awarded 1 million 100,000 euros uh, from uh, google.org for the EcoScore project and it was a grant uh, to be spent on three years until 2025 yeah. but we got the whole amount um, yeah. in 2021 so that's why you see it on the on the bank account there so sometimes foundations are paying each year uh, but uh, Google wanted to pay in one time, so th that's why there is so much money, uh, so much cash flow, but uh, uh, it, it's uh, affected to projects, uh, so we, we can't use it for anything uh, we want, uh, of course. Uh. Yes, we uh, we have opened um, an account, uh, uh, but we with the, the um, we, we have reached the, the maximum, which is uh, uh, seventy uh, thousand euros, and uh, we can't. Uh, and um, the interest rates right now are n not great anyway, <laughs> but that's something we will. We, we would we would have to pay tax if we want to invest uh, the money and. Investing uh, money as an association is a bit complicated. Uh, yeah, it is risky, of course, and uh, we have to uh, to uh, be careful of the money that is just. Uh, um, we just. Uh, um, yeah. 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 We. 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 Um, <coughs> And interest? No. Yes, yes, you are trusting us to take care of it. So. Yeah, that's something we will have a look in. But in 2021, uh, no risk investment had uh, zero interest rate. Uh, We're gonna buy uh, gas, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah um, of course. It w My question is just, is it allowed to invest as an association? Actually it is. We, we cannot invest it in uh, anything. Uh, there are some rules about what we can do or not, but uh, there are some options. Uh, prepaid expenses, 700 euros, uh, nothing really uh, interesting there. Then uh, the funds of the association, what uh, the association own. Uh, we have a few reserves as every year we make what we don't call a profit because we are non-profit. Uh, usually it's called net asset in English. I learned that today. Uh, so every year those net assets, the difference between the um, <coughs> income between the revenues and expenses uh, at the end of the year is put in those reserves accounts. Uh, that's one of the things uh, Charles was talking about um, previously. Uh, we have a little bit uh, bigger result this year, uh, net asset for 2021, than the previous years. Usually we try to be around zero, uh, above is better than under. So 1,000 euro, 2,000 euro. Uh, that's 12,000 uh, this year. Uh, I will explain why a little bit later. Uh, we got a few investment grants and uh, there are dedicated funds uh, account, uh, which is for some grants we got uh, for this year, but we didn't spend entirely. So if we don't want to give it back to uh, the people who funded us, uh, we have to put it on a dedicated account and to use it for what it was granted for. So that's just a way to use in 2022 some money that was granted in 2021. Now liabilities, uh, as usual, a few uh, supplier uh, payable at the end of the year. 
uh, the amount is still very small and not very different from last year. Uh, we have the we will see later that uh, the salaries are a bit higher in 2021 than 2020 because we have more employees, but uh, the taxes and social security um, liabilities are around same because uh, there was a COVID effect in 2020. Some yes. things were paid late yep. uh, to us and by us, so the amount was inflated. Um, very few other uh, payables and the very big last line is the part of the Google uh, Google Impact Challenge grant that we don't plan to use, we didn't plan to use in 2021 and that was a deferred result for using between 2022 and 2025. Now um, after uh, the assets, uh, the revenues, this uh, slide is probably uh, not very interesting for anyone uh, because uh, the revenues are dispatched according to uh, the French accounting norm, which doesn't tell anything interesting to anyone, except maybe the ones that I translated, the individual donations. Uh, that uh, represented uh, 12,000 euro last year and almost uh, more than 16,000 this year. Um, and the total line, uh, which showed that we almost doubled um, our revenues this year compared to last year. Uh, but maybe the next slide is more interesting. Uh, that's the same, uh, same data. That's uh, the 296,000 euros of revenue, but how it's yep. where it comes from. And uh, what you can see is that in 2021, uh, the Google Impact Challenge uh, still represented less than 50% of the revenues, which is uh, probably more comfortable than having um, uh, only one source representing more than 50%. Yeah. Uh, Santé Publique France, uh, which is uh, the nomination of the French government uh, of the health, health ministry, uh, trying to encourage uh, better uh, nutrition in the French population, uh, gave us around a quarter of uh, our budget. The NLNet Foundation uh, is the third one with uh, 49,000 uh, euros in 2021. Um, then the individual donation, uh, 16,500. Uh, the AFNIC uh, gave us 10,000 euro and uh, Paris University uh, bought uh, a some service from uh, Open Food Facts to help them uh, in a study. Uh, they are uh, uh, driving for 10 years now called Nutrinet. Yes. And there are a, a, few, a few more small lines uh, for a total of uh, 16,000 uh, 16, in, in yellow, others. Okay, uh, AFNIC is also a foundation just to precise. And what did we do with uh, all that uh, generous money? Uh, we bought a few things, not much, 12,000 euro, uh, a few computers, uh, a few travel expenses mainly. Uh, we paid some taxes, uh, not much, uh, 5,000 euro, and uh, we paid a little bit more salaries than last year. Uh, 150,000 euros because we have more more employees now and there will be even more next year. Uh, we paid some social security expenses uh, for those salaries, a uh, little bit for amortization, 2,000 euro, and uh, you can see here the uh, 54,000 euro of grants that we reported to use next year that have to appear there. 
So uh, the uh, gross income for ordinary operation is uh, in line with last year, uh, 2,500 euro. You saw before 12,000 euro for the total gross income. The difference comes from some exceptional operation. We rediscovered a PayPal account we forgot yeah. uh, <laughs> a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it was probably still, uh, still on some pages and places and people were still donating to it. Yes. So we discovered 10,000 euro. Yes, my, my bad. My bad. It's a, it's, a good, it's a good news. Hopefully it's a good news, but my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> if you can go to the next slide, Charles. I yep. did the same as the previous one for uh, the expenses. And here you can see very clearly that our main expenses are salaries and the corresponding social security charges and uh, expenses and taxes and amortization are the very small slices you can see on top. And that's all for 2021. And I'm at your disposal for any question with Charles. Okay, thank you very much, Vincent. Uh, are there questions? One question on the usage of the Google money. There is a sort of limited time in, in theory. Yeah. Uh, yes. And is it, is yes. it under control, the limited time of usage yes, of that money? Yes, it's three years. And uh, um, I already worked on the budget of 2022, 2023, and even 2024, uh, because we have some partnership which are four years long. So uh, um, I had to, to have an idea of the, the long term. And um, uh, what, uh, what you will, uh, will be able to see, um, yeah, um, oh, it's not there. It's, uh, it's, no, it's okay. Um, wha what is important to understand is that this money will be uh, used and well used Okay, <laughs> and uh, in time, uh, it's not a, a problem at all. Uh, and um, what can I say more? Is it and the budget of 2025? Yep. So it's the budget of the 2025 that does not have any Google money, correct? At this point. Uh, no, uh, 2025 also have a little Google money because there is a, we also won in 2022 another uh, a thing that is uh, the Google Travel um, Charities, yes. Um, yes, that's, that's, uh, that's right. But uh, this is 2022, okay, it's not 2021. And um, it uh, represents, uh, I guess, uh, 3,000 3, euros. Um, oh, um, sorry, 300,000 euros. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, so the travel for charities and it's is a different for four status. years. Oh, it's for four years. Okay. Yes. yes starting okay. from 2022. Yes, starting okay. from 2022. Okay. But uh, the, the uh, mid 2022. Yeah. So, with the current expenses for salaries that, ch uh, that Vincent showed us on the beautiful pie chart, um, the impact challenge financing will cover until 2025 fully, partially, still needs, well. No, 2025, no, uh, yes, no, partially, par uh, okay. no, Google Impact Challenge 2025, no, it will be finished. Finished, but okay. What, How what much we can budget is covered for 2025? Um, just to, um, what, what maybe no, you can. A, don't have the Excel. Sorry? No, nothing. Maybe what you, we can think about is that uh, the activity is already funded to for 18 months. Okay. okay. So after this 18 months, after this 18 months, we'll, uh, we would have to reach more money. But of course, we have, we would, uh, we will reach uh, uh, more money before this uh, 18 months. But activity is covered with all the, uh, the new employees uh, that have been uh, uh, employed uh, in 2022. 
And um, what, yes, what do you want to know? I don't understand. I, I understood Google money covers 2024, 22, 23, 24? Yes. And 18 months from now? Yes. That's 223. And 18 months is completely covered. Okay? And in 2024, uh, we still have money from Google's, but it won't cover all okay. the budget. And like okay? But it, wa it will cover about... Uh, three months? Uh, Th third, uh, third percent of the budget of 2024, I guess. Yes, okay. uh, but we, w honestly, we don't know because no, maybe okay. we'll have to uh, to uh, employ more people or less. I okay, it's, so the it's Google, complicated. The Google, the Google money, it's 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Yes, and a little bit of 2024. Yeah, okay. that's right. M more than a little bit. So, uh, Charles, can you go, yeah. go back to the previous slide? Yes, which is the previous uh, one. The, the one with the... So the this one? Yeah, this one. So mm -hmm. the, the, the interesting figure here is uh, the estimated budget for 2023. So that basically, assuming that we have like mostly salaries and that we keep it this, this way, uh, it means that we'll have to find in new uh, financing uh, half a million euro per year, if I'm right. So uh, 24, yes. uh, assuming that we like stay relatively stable in terms of headcount uh, in 24, 20, uh, 24, 5, 6, 7 until the uh, 2050s, because uh, in fact we live that long, uh, we'll have to find one half a million euro per year uh, in new grants, subventions, uh, public donation, etc. That's right. But it doesn't work like this because uh, it doesn't work like this, because uh, maybe, for example, uh, when we won the Google Impact Challenge, we won one million in one shot, okay, for three or four years. So we don't have to find uh, five, um, 500,000 uh, euros per year. It's, it's not like this, really. Yeah, that's right. One question not about the, the figures, but what's the Google travels for charities? I, w I wasn't, um, <laughs> I, d I don't know it. May, may, maybe uh, not knowing this, you, you have donated to this because it's when Googlers are traveling uh, all around the world for their job or for, for their activity uh, and they don't use the total amount of the budget uh, in uh, the hotel, the travel and so on. They can uh, give this part to associations uh, non-profits uh, such as uh, us. So we were listed among the charities uh, that, that were, could benefit and the year was COVID, so nobody traveled. So, <laughs> yeah. so basically we were very, yes. very lucky. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Pierre. Um, so the, um, do, do we vote now or do I present maybe uh, some points of the near future and the future? No, 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 it's two months. No, I explain. Um, the two months of reserves, uh, it's money that is not affected to any project. We can use it as we want. Uh, the um, f Google Impact Challenge is uh, some um, funds that are affected to something. We have to deliver something and we have uh, we, we have uh, resources to do it, we have employees, and we will do it, okay? But uh, what we have done is that uh, when we, um, for example, each uh, at the end of the year, uh, we were, um, uh, previous um, budget were positive, and we keep this money, uh, we, we can do it, and I think uh, you advise us uh, to, to, to do it, uh, Florence. But <laughs> yeah, I, I actually advise it, but I don't think I called it reserve. It was confusing to me um, also yeah, when I read it. Maybe it's not the right term. Yeah, what, maybe what do you call it? Call it uh, unaffected money. Non uh, yeah, I don't maybe know. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's not the right term. I'm yeah. Sorry. 
already funded would be more like uh, cash, cash covers for 18 months. And funded, you might be funded for a little more, is the people that will potentially uh, give you more projects that you know they will give you. Like, that's actually an interesting data is based on what, what has a very high probability of happening, how many additional months do you have in addition to the cash? Yes. For example, if you know that this, uh, you're going to receive this money or that, uh, or that uh, there is a very high chance of renewal of something, you can say, okay, we have additional six months yes. of, it's, of yeah. potential it's, cash coming it's, in. It's additional months. Yes, it's, yes, it's, a, it's additional ah, months. So the two months is money that you have not received yet? No. No, we no, have this. Leftover money. The yes, 10, we have this the money. They found on the PayPal. Ah. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, that's not two additional months. No, but 500k per like year. That's 40k month. per month. Plus no, it's some other stuff that they found. Like, no. It can be yeah. used for additional months, but it can be used also for uh, not. Uh, but it's cash you already have, right? Yes. yes okay, so have. activity is funded for 20 months then. Yeah, we could say that. The cash covers for 20 months. I mean, what's really we important is that. how many months do you have before you have to find yes, money? Yes, we, we could say that, but... Uh, like that's the data that you want to know. But this money is not affected, you know? And, and what is important also is to have a, a bit of money in case of uh, maybe... Uh, uh, what's happening if you have a, a big trial, for example? If you are sued uh, by a by big actor of the industry, I don't know. So it's important to keep a little money uh, for I don't know, or maybe for investments. Uh, Sometimes maybe we we would uh, like to uh, to use uh, ten thousand euro, uh, for example, for for a particular thing that which is very important. Maybe we can use it for that. Uh, so I think it's important to to have this money and uh, yes, an affected reserve. Okay, okay. Yes, 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 that's right, yeah, 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 <laughs> yes, that's right. I just wanted to give it to Too late. <laughs> no, but, yeah, good. Okay. Oh. Sorry? Ah, um, so Eloise, uh, for Eloise a wants to vote. Yes, for a question of time, uh, wants to vote. So we can start the. We, yeah, we can start the vote and then uh, see the near future and the future after, if you are, if you're ready. Validating the accounting. So um, who's handing the vote? Yes, who's. Uh, who, who, um, who can, um, who can who note the, the votes? Who is the secretary of séance? Uh, the president cannot be the secretary of séance. Yeah, you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can we vote if we're employees, or, or we can't vote? Um, about the vote of the employees, because uh, mm. some employees, or near, I think all the employees are members of the, um, the association. Uh, you, you can vote if there are no... Um, uh, conflict of interest. Yes, conflict uh, of interest. Uh, like so you're I not think involved in the management, maybe. Yeah, so I think the, the budget uh, the, um, and the, the report, it's, it's okay. Past years, uh, members of the association have voted uh, these kind of things. What does the statute say? Sorry? The links to vote? No, but we, we just uh, vote uh, by hand or what, what do you mean? And I think there was no, you prefer to have um, a voting system? What, what do you mean? Ah, yes. Yes. Yes.
Okay. Yes, yes, you're right. So it's all here. The annual report, you've seen it, okay? Uh, accounting, do you want to see it? Or not? The link is, uh, ah. So the accounts are on the our on our wiki, okay? And um, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, link. there's a bad link. Um, okay. So um, that's a bad link, but we have the right link here. Sorry. I will be. Um, it's here. It was in the convocation of Assemblée Générale, uh, and at the end of the document, you have the right links activity report, accounts. So I'm hoping the both and all the candidates. So this is the accounts. Just to show you, okay, Vincent has talked about it. Uh, okay, don't, uh, uh, the activity report is also published um, in its full version on the wiki. Just to show you. Too many images on the report. Oh, sorry, it for the delay. Yeah, but there. Yes, there was... For, for online votes. Yeah. We didn't receive uh, any uh, votes. To my, to my yes? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Who? Uh, Marie. Marie. Ah, yes. Sorry. Okay. Um, so you, you'll have to help me because I didn't see that. Um, and um, candidates for the um, board of administration um, administrators uh, is here. Maybe the candidates can uh, speak a little bit about. Uh Wait, should we? Do you want to do that now, or do you want to do the votes, votes first. first? The two yeah. votes first, and then the people. Okay, the two votes first. Okay. Okay. So who's counting? <coughs> Who's counting? Do you have a list of present at the General Assembly or not? Uh, no, we, yes, we should. Alex, tu peux nous uh, nous aider? Est-ce que tu as besoin d'aide pour les noms ou pas? Yeah, definitely. And we also need to know. Um, okay, so who is member of the association? And we'll have to make the, the list of participants. I think you need to put all the everything because there's okay. So let's start from one end. Okay. Anka no, Luca. Go there, go there, and we'll come back. So Charles Sebastian. Stefan. Oui, si vous pouvez dire vos noms et vos comme ça, c'est pour euh, Alex qui connaît peut-être pas les noms de tout le monde. Harry. You need something after Harry. Ha Bloom. Harry Bloom. B L O O M. A Bloom is in Bloom. Okay. Yeah. I, I said already. Who else? Um, Raphael Bournonesque. Je pense qu'il faut que je l'appelle. Je te, je te redirai ça. Ouais. Gala. Gala Nafikova. Ok, who else is member here? Ok, yes. Ma nobody there? No Ma member? Mathias, no? have you registered um, yesterday? Yes, so Matthias. So you'll vote also, you're a member of the association. Spell, tell your name to Alex so that he lists it in the, 
report of okay. the meeting and so that when we count votes we have everybody in. Okay, that's fine. So Matthias Schmid. Who else? Florence Devoir. Ludovic Dubost avec un T. Héloïse Langer. C'est bon euh, Léonore Villelm, W-I-L-H-E-L-M. Vincent Bataille, comme une bataille. Pierre Slamy. Gabriel Benzenou, B-E-N-Z-E-N-O-U. Alexandre Fouquet. Moi, moi aussi, en quel cas. Ah oui. Et note toi, toi aussi. Ok. Anka, Mika, et ICA. C'est tout, je crois, non Who's JB JB is not appearing. Alex. En ligne, on ne sera pas en ligne. Marc H. Christophe Jordan H. Combien on en est en total pour compter ensuite Quoi Combien de personnes on est sur la liste là, des présents ici Oui, mais pour compter ensuite les votes, pour quand on votera, pour qu'on sache combien. Tout le monde est présent. Oui, mais à quel total on doit arriver en fait On s'en fout, on s'en fout ah de bon la majorité, c'est tout. Hein. Okay. La majorité même pas, d'ailleurs, il suffit qu'il y ait un vote non, mais si à un moment donné, et ça marche. Tout à fait, sauf que si à un moment donné, on a 20 votes pour et je sais pas, 7 votes contre, et on est 25 en total, on aura un problème. Oui, tu vas compter. Bah, on va voir. Mais, euh, mais justement, c'est ça que je voulais, que quelqu'un compte pour moi. Mais il va les compter, il Ok, là. très bien. Hein Merci. 18, hein j'ai le chiffre. Um, okay. Yes, okay, we have 18 people. And how many remotes? Including the remotes? Yeah, it's including two remotes. Is that it? Okay. So uh, if you agree with that, we can vote with the hand. Is it, is it okay for everybody? Yes? yes? Okay. So um, uh, who approves? Uh, the uh, wha what do we want to start the accounts or the report? The report. the report of 2021. Uh, who counts? Secretary? And who? Uh, okay. I think it's everybody. Alors, attendez, attendez, attendez. On, on va dire who, who, di who, uh, who disapprove? Who disapprove it? <laughs> you should do it the other way. Who is against? Wait, wait, c'est ça. Who's, who's, who's against? Who abstains? Okay, and who's against the report? Okay. I have done. No, uh, unanimous. Um, how did you get 19? Uh, With including people online. Yeah, including so for the activity report, the vote is 18 for, zero against, zero yes. abstention. Abstention. Yeah. And now, is it, is it okay for us? So, so, 18 for the people present. I'm just saying what happened in the room to everybody so that if everybody, if anybody else saw something else, they need to mention Plus it two now. Remote votes. Plus two remote votes. Yes. Yeah. One abstention. One abstention remote and one four remote. Yes. So, in total, 19 four out of 20, one abstention and zero against okay. for the activity report. Yes. And now for, for the accountings. For the accounting, uh, financial, financial, uh, financial accounting. Yes. And 
what is the financial question? reports, okay. What is, uh, what is the question? Uh, do you agree on the, the document uh, published on the wiki, the financial committees? Do you approve, uh, sorry, yes, do you approve? Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to vote, but, um, so but I think it's okay. No? Do you want okay. Approving the... Uh, uh, approving the uh, financial report that was just Abs presented and yeah, published okay. online. Approving. Okay, same thing. Okay. okay. We won't count now because we're lazy. Who, who abstains? Who abstains? Two. Ah, two. Uh, it's, it's normal because uh, there is uh, the treasury... Uh, Treasurer. Treasurer and the um, and, uh, general, yes. general director. And who's against? Yeah. Who's against the financial report that was just presented that is published online? Zero against, two abstentions, and if I'm good at math, 16 four from the present 18 and for the online votes. What did we receive? Yeah, one remote. One remote okay and one four and one remote abstention. In total, three abstentions, zero against, and 17 four. Okay, thank you very much. I'm good at math. And uh, do we follow by the um, election of the... Yeah, let's go for the elections. Today? And uh, Anka, no, would people you, need you to like speak. to start? <laughs> so for the elections uh, for the board, there are um, four candid three candidates. Four candidates? Four candidates this year. Um, no, I like the box. I like the box. Box is cool. Um, so I'm the first candidate uh, for the elections on the board. I'm Anka Luka. I have been participating in the project since it's written there, probably, yeah, 2016, so a while ago, with small presentations representing the project here and, the project here and there. I also tried to contribute code but it didn't work out very well for me because Pearl, um, not only, but sure. And uh, since 2019, I am the president of the association. I am fully volunteer, uh, and I do my best to do my part in it. So I hereby present my uh, uh, candidature for the election in the board, re-election in the board. Who's next? Next is Sebastian. Marie. Ah, uh, Sebastian? Yeah. Maybe, Mary maybe Eleanor first, Sebastian? Be Eleanor first, but uh, maybe. No. Uh, no, not oh, Eleanor, no. sorry. Eloise, uh, Eloise. sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I will try it in English, but I'm not sure, but okay. Uh, I'm uh, Sebastian. I um, start to contribute to Open Food Facts in uh, 2013. And I had a lot of products, uh, many contribution in the sites and websites. And then uh, for the foundation of the association, I was one of the five co-founders. And uh, since uh, for this time, I'm a board member of uh, the association. Uh, I really uh, try to uh, bring um, uh, 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 what? a regard, uh, a view, a view, <laughs> a point of view of a contributor. I'm here uh, in the board, in the board of uh, as a contributor. Uh, as a contributor of, of Open Food Facts, and uh, I have a lot of uh, experience and uh, other uh, projects in the web like Wikipedia, Wikidata, OpenStreetMap, and I try to, to bring that. And um, I'm really, um, Open Food Facts is, ve is very uh, important for me. Uh, in the beginning, there was a small association. And uh, uh, from uh, since uh, 2016, uh, it's growing and growing. And uh, now we have some salaries. Uh, now we are international. And uh, I think it's very important to keep uh, some uh, uh, value, values of uh, transparency, uh, collaboratively, and uh, and sharing because it's uh, it's a good um, common. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, hi again, I'm Eloise. Um, as explained, I was part of the uh, Google employee um, during the, the working pro bono during six months for Open Food Facts. I was in charge in uh, particular of partnership development and marketing. Um, and I uh, think I managed to <laughs> get some, uh, some uh, yeah, successes during this mission. Um, for instance, uh, as uh, Pierre mentioned earlier, uh, some new partners on board like PepsiCo and Nestle in Germany and Switzerland um, also contributed in the development of the new logo, this, uh, I think, nice new logo. Um, also uh, working on the, the, the VivaTech booth, uh, showcasing Open Food Fact new app. At, uh, yeah, at VivaTech, um, and, uh, yeah, and many other missions uh, around the, yeah, the app and communication and marketing. Um, and I'm um, particularly, since uh, those uh, last two years, in charge in my daily job at Google of food producers. Um, that's why also uh, it was uh, an important, it was important for me to be involved in a uh, in this project with Open Food Facts, and I hope that my uh, uh, the, the people I know in those companies um, uh, yeah, will help uh, to influence this uh, this project. Uh, and because I'm totally uh, convinced about um, Open Food Facts projects, and I want to uh, be engaged in the food uh, uh, yeah, the food system change. That's why it's important for me to, to be here and be involved in the, in the, in the association. So hope to be a part of this board for this year. Thank you. And I'm going to introduce the uh, last candidate. Her name is uh, Marie and she lives in Lyon. And uh, she was going to come today for the off days, but unfortunately she had to cancel at the last minute. Uh, Marie is one of uh, our very very, very active contributors, like, uh, like Sebastian. Um, she's, whenever we have like special operations and, and we ask for help on the contributors channel on Slack, she's always there and uh, uh, to complete products. So for instance, we, had, uh, we, want, we needed to get uh, uh, completed products from Carrefour and there were like 3,000 products to complete. And day after day, week after week, she was saying, okay, oh, we are at uh, 3,000 products, 2,800, uh, uh, 2, and, and she, she really worked a, lo a lot to complete the product. She, she also participated in, uh, into some uh, fairs in, uh, in, uh, in Lyon to present the, the project. So she's very sad that she cannot be with us uh, today. Uh, but as just like Sebastian, she's also the voice of the, of the contributors people who complete uh, products, and she, she does a lot of work on uh, data quality and things like that. It's, it's, it's also very important, I think, to have people like, uh, like Marie uh, to, to work, uh, to be part of the, of the board. Um, what, what is interesting with the candidates and the uh, current uh, board is that they are um, co contributors um, like uh, Sebastian, Marie, uh, uh, and, and, and so on, and, and also people uh, who have skills, uh, uh, some skills that maybe we, we don't have or, or we have, but uh, uh, we can advise, um, we can advise the, the, the team, the permanent team, or the whole uh, project uh, with their skills, which is very interesting. Um, so um, I think that uh, for the moment we have a great uh, um, board member, great board, uh, great board. Yeah. Okay. Alex. Uh, current board, which are uh, already elected, just present themselves in uh, not not so long, but just say the, uh, who, who they are. So Florence Devoir. Uh, I've been a board member for three years, I think. Is that? Yes, I think three years. Um, 
Well, I was happy to be there because that was the first time I, ca I came to the uh, Open Food Fact Days. Uh, my uh, community of belonging is Wikimedia, just as, as uh, you mentioned earlier, and I've been, and I'm still am on many association board. So I try to bring not at all, I'm not an open food fact contributor at all, I'm not a tech person either, but I try to bring a different perspective and viewpoint uh, based on my own experience in the other association. So it's more an external view and uh, thinking, that's it. Thank you. And w one of your great experiences that you were the first elected person at the Wikimedia Foundation uh, which is very precious for us because you have always very good advice for uh, advices for us and uh, uh, that I think that's very precious. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Ludovic Dubost. I'm a, a CEO of a small uh, company, 40 people, that does open source. So I try to bring that experience to uh, open food facts, uh, especially on financing questions or management or even infrastructure for example and give advice on how to how to uh, uh, develop the the association in full transparency i'm also the partner of anka the president the current president so uh, and i'm very happy to uh, to participate and i have seen the growth of open food facts in the last years Hello, so I'm Leonor. I'm a board member since um, 2017, I think. Um, I contribute uh, to Open Food Fact mostly um, on the taxonomy, um, um, the category taxonomy, and also a, a bit uh, on the gradient uh, taxonomy. I also participate uh, to the um, a challenge we did in, I don't remember the year, about additives uh, where um, we, um, I read some document of the uh, EFSA to extract uh, info on the um, additive uh, risks um, in the food population. Um, and what else? Uh, um, and that's all. <laughs> yes. uh, Leonor represents a kind of contributor which is rare because uh, working on taxonomies, there are few people uh, doing this job, and uh, so it's also important to, uh, to focus on this because uh, there are people contributing products, but if you don't have a good taxonomy, we, don't, we won't have good scores and, uh, and uh, good ways of comparing the products, and uh, so uh, Leonor is doing a great job uh, in, this in this part. Okay. Um, uh, yes, Christian, but maybe I can introduce uh, Christian. Uh, Christian is not here. He, um, he apologizes for that today. And um, he's a former president of uh, OpenStreetMap France. Uh, and he manages uh, the uh, Open food fa uh, OpenStreetMap France infrastructure. And he's also a very huge helper for, for them, for um, Open food facts uh, on the infrastructure. He helped a lot uh, on the on, uh, Foxonomy Engine project. So in very, he's very involved in the IT. Um, and uh, why could I say more about Christian? Um, and it's oh, it's also a, a huge open data uh, specialist here in France. Uh, he has funded uh, many uh, uh, projects uh, such as uh, Open Data Ar Archive in France or uh, things like that. And, uh, um, well, okay. Uh, Vincent? Thank you, Charles. So I'm Vincent Mataille. I've been involved in Open Food Facts since I was just checking September 2012. And I think I'm a member of the club with Sebastian of people who entered more than 5,000 products. <laughs> <laughs> and I happen to be interested in open data in general. And I've been in charge for five years of the French open data portal data.gov.fr. So I have less 
time for open food facts uh, now than I had a few years ago, but uh, I'm still very interested in uh, trying to walk with everyone here toward um, we don't we don't really know where we're going, but we know we know the ways up. <laughs> so I think I'm the last one. Yes. So by the way, there is uh, one more slot open, maybe for next year, uh, because uh, there is only five candidates, uh, four candidates, and s five slots. Yes. And it would be great at some point to have an international uh, person representing yes. international yes. also. Great. And uh, oh. so think about it for the future. Yeah. Um, uh, for 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 today, it's impossible because uh, we are voting for a, a closed list. But uh, the statutes. Uh, allows the, um, the board to nominate uh, people uh, in case of vacancy. Okay. okay? So uh, you, the board, uh, you could choose uh, something, for example, Harry or uh, I don't know, uh, Matthias, uh, uh, if he wants, for example, to join the board and uh, if you agree with it, and if you, you can nominate him to. Uh, to get in the board, uh, and we will be elected at the or not at the next uh, election. Yes, the statutes say that. Yes, it's co cooptation. Especially if you have free slots, right? Yes, especially. Uh, yes, we can do only. Yes, only for the free slots. Only for the free slots. Uh. Sorry. That's That's a very good question. Because I ideally, I mean, I That's a very good question. As Vincent said, uh, there would be a lots of, I mean, legally, from a legal point of view, not only Vincent, but everybody said it. From a legal point of view, there's a lot of paperwork, like the report will be in French and everything. And if you want to sign the report at the end of the, of, of the board meetings, you're going to sign something in French and have to trust the others for the, um, for the translation and for the accuracy of what was discussed or something like that. So I guess there's no obligation in the statutes for that person no. to speak French, but there would be that constraint. They would be actually involved in something for which they do not necessarily control fully the, legally, the, legal, the legal binding part. And I don't know if we can appeal to, a, like if we can take like a professional translator Knowing that you could decide not to vote, yeah. for example, on stuff, but still be a member of the of the board. Yeah. So that's a very tricky question. I have no idea. I, I personally think we should go there. Of course, we should open the board to uh, many uh, uh, people outside of France, non non French people, uh, and I guess that the board is agree with that. Well, I'm not yeah, sure about it, but uh, uh, and I think it's, it would be good for the association. Uh, but we, there are this little legal point, but maybe we could investigate more about it and uh, uh, maybe telling more about uh, next uh, yeah, we need to, we need next to year. Check. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So so we, yeah. So do we start the vote? Okay. Do you still agree to vote uh, with the hand? Okay. No. Okay. Say anybody disagrees to vote? Ah, anybody disagrees to vote with the hand? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to lead the vote? Yeah, if you want to lead the vote, it's okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, you know. Mm, you can vote for yourself. You can vote for yourself. Yes, you can. You can vote for. And you can vote several times. You can vote several times. Yes, if, no. the if the yeah. members of the if there are three slots, so you can vote three times. Okay. Okay. Yes, you can, you can vote three times. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, we are starting with Anka. Who uh, approve? the candidature of Anka. 
Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna ask who abstains and who disapprove. Okay, it's a, a Stalinian election. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, abstain. Okay. No, I didn't abstain. I, I voted for myself. Yeah. yeah. So it, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Not I not shocking. Fine. Who approve a Marie Fash candidature? Who abstains for my first candidature? And who disapprove my first candidature? Against. Sorry? Against. Who is against? Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ludovic. In the box. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't count, so uh, I, I have. Sorry. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, 20, uh, 18, 4, and 2 remote 4, 0 abstention, 0 against. Okay, fine. So, who approve Sébastien Gaetier candidature? And who is against, uh, who is um, abstains, sorry? Sebastian does not vote for himself. Oh. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, who um, disapprove, uh, was against, sorry, uh, Sebastian Gatier candidature? Zero. Okay. okay. So uh, for Sebastian, there is uh, uh, 17 plus one remote, four. Abstention one plus one remote and zero zero against. Okay. And now who approve Eloise Langer candidature? Who abstains? And who disapprove or, or against Eloise Langer candidature? Okay, one vote. So uh, 17, 4, plus uh, one remote, which are four, one remote abstention, and one against. OK, fine. So all the candidates are elected to the board. Um, would you like to make a pause? Would you like to make a pause, or would you like to uh, end and see the, the near future? Yes, Alex? Uh, just to say that uh, we had no, how you call it? I don't know. Yeah. No, just to explain also to the new members that the, the election, you have to, to present yourself 15 days before the yeah. assembly. Yeah. And there was also a call to motions, but we didn't receive any motion. We have no motion to vote. Okay. You can, I you can close. I, I think for next year we'll try to explain maybe uh, what are motions and things like that, because uh, it's maybe unclear in, in particular for people uh, living outside of France to explain that they can express themselves. Um, I don't know. Um, maybe we will see. We we'll see that. Uh, okay. So do you do you want to uh, to continue or to first have a little pause maybe before? Vote for the pause. <laughs> wait, wait. Shall we close? <laughs> shall we close the assembly? No, you want to keep it open? Um, I I don't. I think that discussions about the future are part of yeah. the uh, general okay, assembly. Okay, so we'll keep it in the assembly. Let's do a pause then. Uh, probably lunch.
Ish? As you want. How long is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many slides? Uh, we, 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 um, uh, we have, um, I think it was 10 to 12, so uh, we are late already. So lunchish, and then we finish one more hour? Or so something? if everybody agree uh, with uh, the pause, it's okay. Um, yeah, but I it's the pause, the lunch. Um, up to you. What do you want? How long is it? Okay. Um, the, for the lunch, we have to buy uh, things outside, so it will be uh, about so one hour. Then. So let's we finish? Yeah. Okay, no, fine. Let's, let's take a coffee and then we'll finish. Uh, 15 yeah, minutes? A, f a coffee? Okay. General Assembly, the votes are over because there is no motions. Uh, uh, no, not motions, but um, yes, motions. Is that that? Okay. Uh, so the votes are over. So uh, we might close the General Assembly and discuss of the future later after lunch, if you agree with that. Oh. Is it okay or not? Because we, we don't have to speak about all Which this question? during the General Assembly, because we, we, maybe we can discuss, but we won't vote for, for, for this uh, kind of discussions. But we can have these discussions this afternoon and start lunch now yeah now oh, so we, we it's a, it was a suggestion <laughs> yeah i'm sorry okay so the question <laughs> is is anybody against closing the general yes, assembly yes is a b thank you ludovic is anybody is against closing the general assembly no zero votes are you yeah uh, I, I would, yes it's not to vote against but just to say uh e if we talk about the future outside of the assembly, uh, it means that there is, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if it's, it changed the value of uh, the exchanges or, or not. I, I don't know. I mean, when we are in general assembly, we do a report of what was said in the general assembly. That means, you don't take that the means they're not in the report. That means the what? discussions about the futures are, are not in the report. Does it change the value? It depends what is the value of the discussion of the general assembly uh, outside the vote. Not much, actually, as far as I know, so... Okay. Can we, like, adopt an ad hoc provision to say that whatever we say this afternoon will be on the record or yes. something like that? Yes, yes. So I'm who's for, sure. like, uh, that our discussion from this afternoon will be on the record for the General Assembly? Yeah. Okay, perfect.